Welcome back to the Beat Break Morning Show. Good morning, Sean Garvey. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Beat Break Radio. Don't forget to download the Podcast FM app to your mobile device. That is the Podcast FM app available wherever you get your app. Sean Garvey, DJ Rollum, and Star Kells, who is in Africa right now. Joining with us on the Beat Break Morning Show, uh, an actor, of course. He's doing a lot of big things. You can check him out on Mayor of Kingston on the Paramount Plus Network. Uh, I'm already addicted to the show just by watching the first episode. So I got a lot of binge watching to do. And uh, this gentleman mm -hmm. that I'm about to bring on right now is giving me more reasons to check out the show and other projects he's working on. Marcus Brandon on the Beat Break Morning Show. Good morning, how you doing? Hey, good morning, what's up my brother? Appreciate you having me, man. Thanks for hosting me. Man, I appreciate you for coming on and, and talking to us, man. You know, I, I always love actors and actresses doing a lot of great things on television and in yes. film, on screen, off screen, because uh, that's the platform. You know, we work on the platform for up and coming new and established mm -hmm. actors and actresses doing great things, man. Uh, you heard me just say Mayor of Kingston. Of course, I'm already addicted to the show. You know how whenever you watch a television show, right? Yeah. And at first, you know, you hear about it. You be like, oh, you know, I don't have time to watch it. I'm doing <laughs> so many different things at one time. Yeah. But as soon as you watch the first episode, oh, you start man. to get hooked on it, right? Yeah. And then you, you know, you want to watch the second and third. And next thing you know, yeah. you already watching the entire season. And you looking forward yeah. to season two <laughs> and season three. So we're going to get into that, uh, but we got a lot to unpack and learn about you, Marcus Brandon. Uh, military household, you grew up in a military household and you spent a lot of your childhood in Europe. So talk to us about that journey being, uh, yeah. you know, growing up in a military household. Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was definitely different. It wasn't the traditional childhood that many people hear about. But uh, it was it was a, a gift and a curse. It was a blessing because my parents come from humble beginnings, and it gave my father, my pops, a way out from uh, Moss Point, Mississippi. And he he wanted to see more in the world. He wanted to be able to to have a afford a better life, and and the military was a way for him to get out. And through the military, he was uh, able to meet my moms, and and they made it happen. And we was uh, off to the races from there. Um, I, I've done lived in so many different diverse backgrounds, man. I, I lived in trailer parks and projects and suburbs, wow. Europe, the Southern States of America. So there, there's not a lot of group of people that you can't throw me in the room mm -hmm. with and I can't relate to them. But growing yeah. up in the military really just gave me, because I got to travel and see Europe at a young age and see other cultures, I think it gave me a more open mind at a younger age. Than, mm -hmm. than some people are uh, typically privileged to. And I'm very grateful for that because it, it definitely lends its hands to my acting. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, and also experiencing different cultures uh, mm -hmm. around the world and, and just yeah. in Europe. Like what else have you learned on your journey traveling around the world, you know, as a person who not only advocates mental health, but I yeah. also advocate for traveling and just learning different yes. cultures and stuff like that. Like, you know, what other things did you pick up uh, being brought up in that particular environment? Yeah, I think, um, as I mentioned, just being more open-minded because I see that, you know, the, the, the globe doesn't revolve around just America, United States mm -hmm. of America. It doesn't just revolve around markets there are so many different lives and lifestyles and cultures out here that everybody has their own traditions their own uh, etiquette their own uh, way of living and be able to see that there's not just one way to go about this on this planet and understanding that some people are born to more fortunate situations than others and it lets you know sometimes how how lucky you can be being mm -hmm. in the shoes that you are and you might think that 
especially in the United States of America, think that, you know, you might be struggling or think that you you want more. We always want more. But when yeah. you really get out into the world, you really see how fortunate you, you can be um, and, and being grateful for the things that you do have because a lot of people are not as fortunate. But also just also I just got to see how loving the world can be as well and, and mm-hmm. how open arms parts of the world can be. Uh, especially when there's a lot of harsh parts of this world, but there's a lot of a lot of loving people out there and people yeah. who are welcoming and uh, having that as a kid really, I think it's still in myself as well. I think I, I like to be as open-minded and, and welcoming to people's differences and uh, the way people, you know, perceive and subjectively walk through this world, and, mm. um, and just understand how people, you know, humans work in general. We all just work different. Yeah, it's so amazing you say that because I think people who don't travel or get out mm-hmm. of their comfort zone, they are simply closed-minded. They think that mm. they know all the answers <laughs> by, um, you know, just going by what the news say to them or mm-hmm. just by reading newspapers and stuff like that but you really don't know unless you travel unless you get yeah. out of your comfort zone and you go to all these different places and like don't just go to these these different places just for fun or just to right. say hey i went here <laughs> and i went there but yeah. it's also a, a, a learning experience an educational yeah. experience to learn different cultures and to have that sense of humility and, right. and that, that right. sense of humanity for people, yeah. That's yeah, big, man. Immerse yourself in, in that in that culture. Definitely, if you don't have a passport, get yourself a passport. <laughs> it's worth the... I, worth you, I, I, I had this <laughs> premonition that you was about to say that. Like, yeah. if you don't have a passport, get you one. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's sad. Like I, I forgot what the statistic is. I don't usually quote statistics, but I know it's a high number of people in the United States of America that does not have a passport and mm-hmm. never been out the country. And and I personally think that's a shame. Not that there's there's a lot of beautiful parts of America, uh, United States of America, a lot of parts I still haven't explored, but there's just so much more in this world. And you yeah. should have the don't limit yourself because you don't have a passport. You know, at least give yourself the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Another fun fact about you is that you are a proud member of Kappa Alpha Phi fraternity. Uh, why do I why do I continue to keep coming across the members of you all? <laughs> yeah. Kappa Alpha Psi is the best, man. Yo. Wow. <laughs> Yo to all the noobs. Yeah. yeah. What was that experience like for you? Um, I, I loved it. I I enjoyed it very much. Um, a lot of my very close friends to this day come by way of being a member of Kappa Alpha Psi, and um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I I do take that uh, and and tell people that don't define your life by it. It's not something that you have to be in. It's not something that you should go out and and uh sacrifice things to be in but it is a privilege to be in one it is it is definitely a great experience if you are fortunate to become a member of any of the, the uh, divine nine greek organizations um so definitely if you're interested definitely explore it i loved it i had a lot of great times i got to give back to my community through my organization and to this day i mean the list of of members that constantly achieve and have done wonderful things. That list is long, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a definitely a proud member. Yeah, now you got to represent. You got to give us the name of the institution. What, what's the institution name? Well, Cap Alpha Psi. Or, yeah, or, or, or the school, the college, um, the school. Yeah, yeah, Middle Middle Tennessee State University. Oh, nice. It's uh, All right. yeah, but it's the, it's the it's the white school. Don't get it twisted with. Tennessee State University. We're close right. to each other, but <laughs> two different <laughs> schools. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to ask if this is like an HBCU or PWI. Yeah, but yeah, the P- PWI. But we we had a large. We have not had. We have a very very large congregation of Black students uh, there on our campus. That sometimes it, it often feels like an HBCU, but not to take away from the real HBCUs because that's something that. Unfortunately, I missed out on, but if I had the chance, I would love, would have loved to attend HBCU. I definitely stand behind them 100%. 
Absolutely. All right. So let's fast forward being that, uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to call you a military brat. I think that's <laughs> calling someone a military brat, you know? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a term that I think we all embrace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and you know, from that environment, right. Mm-hmm. To being a, a proud member of Kappa Alpha Phi and now acting, what actually drove you into the acting profession? Oh man, I think I've always wanted to be an actor since as long as I can remember. And I remember just growing up with you know television with you know not to age myself, but I had like TGIF. Thank goodness it was Friday. Oh, we had yes. the lineup. Yes. Yeah, with family <laughs> matters and all them. Uh, yeah. Step by step, uh, I would grow up watching. You know, all the great Kung Fu movies and the spy movies, James Bond, I would think I was a spy after watching it. But, yeah. um, and I used to want to be all these things in life. I used to want to have so many different lives in one lifetime. I just wanted to experience all these different occupations and potential careers. But then I realized that I actually wanted to be the person who was inspiring me to do this because I wanted to hopefully one day inspire other people to live different lives that they may have not been aware of or may have not thought they could do and just change. You know, I want to be able to affect people in that way. Just create that magic. Yeah. You know, it's funny because a lot of us, including myself, how I got into radio is watching a lot of cable television. Like in my mind as a kid, cable television was a requirement in the household. Notice (laughs) I said in my mind now, when I was a young kid, and and I yeah. and I got bit by the acting bug just by nice. watching cable television and like you mm-hmm. said you know TGIF Family Matters Step by Step Boy Meets yeah. World Hang with Mr. Yeah. Cooper you know that huge <laughs> yeah, lineup classic. yeah and even like the Saturday morning shows from back in the day oh, and stuff man. but yeah, yeah. Those Saturday mornings was it <laughs> it was yeah. it definitely was um but you know. It's, it's one thing, right? It's one thing to look at television as a kid and inspiring mm-hmm. to be like those characters and like those actors, but to actually do it is um, another. So walk, yeah, walk us through the process of, yeah. the, of when you went from, you know, looking at television and aspiring to do it to now you know, you, you're either taking acting classes or yeah. you're going to auditions and stuff. Walk us through that process. Man, that's, that's a deep rabbit hole, as you you probably already know. Um, yeah. There's no, you know, at least at least before YouTube and Google was as prominent as it is now, there was no one source to figure out how to do things. And the way that they was presenting actors' lives to us was, overnight successes it was just like this star was born overnight and you never really understood that even with acting it takes those 10,000 hours for a lot of people and I didn't know how to do it I was just coming I, I graduated from high school and college in Tennessee I was just like I want to be an actor and one way or the other I was going to be an actor and I thought football was going to be my way to eventually acting I pursued football professionally a little bit didn't work out um I decided ultimately to walk away from it because my heart was just in acting. Even mm-hmm. if I went, I was like, I'm gonna go for a few years, retire, and that would give me access to being an actor. But uh, I was trying to do plays when I was in DC and it just wasn't working. I was throwing spaghetti at the wall, it wasn't sticking. I was just hopping in people's plays and like people was making promises, like this play is gonna take off someday. It never would. And not, not to down them for their efforts and what they were doing. It's just, I was, you know, in that desperate phase when you're, when you first start out, you're just like, I just want to make it. I just want to make it. And I was like, I just need to be in the Mecca. So I needed to be in New York, LA. I got to New York, still trying out for different plays. I found plays on like Craigslist. I found plays online. I was just like, I just, I'm on the audition. I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to trust the universe, trust God. Somehow, some way this is going to work out. And one, I was going to audition for this one play, and as I was going to the audition, this class was letting out, ended up being an acting class, and all the students were just laughing and smiling. They just looked like they had the time of their life, and I was like, what did you guys just come from? I want this energy. I didn't even know it was an acting class. I just wanted to know 
what would happen in that room because I was something about their energy was addictive to me. And I wanted a piece of it. They told yeah. me it was an acting class for this renowned uh, teacher and coach Anthony Apeson, who I owe everything to. I would not be here if it wasn't for him. Phenomenal, phenomenal teacher. He really gave me a great foundation. And once you start getting yourself around your peers, you know, you start mm. building your tribe and everybody has some type of wisdom or resource. They say, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. So then I started getting my my clips and my reels together. I started getting my resume building up, my marketing materials, the business side of acting that they don't usually teach you even in acting school. And um, yeah. started applying that. And then still, it was a matter of just making sure I was working something. It might have not have been the most glorious things, but I was working. And I joined this play in this fringe festival. And it so happened that a big casting director's nephew was in that play with me. I didn't have, I didn't have any idea, I did the play. She saw me after the play. She was like, oh, you did a great job. She's like, do you have an agent? I was like, nah, I don't have any. I'm just out here. <laughs> right. Like, what like, is the like, agent? What is yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just out here. And I didn't even know who she was. Um, but she was like, let's change that. Here's my number. Give me a call tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll email you. <laughs> and still didn't know who she was. She ended up being like this big time uh, commercial agent called Beth Mowski. And she hooked me up with an agent. Uh, commercial agent and then that got me into national commercials and got my face out there and then I just kept pushing kept pushing then I got more recognition and eventually got a manager Melissa Young Management who took me on her wing took that chance on me and the rest is history man yeah just little by little pin that time in pin that work in pin those 10,000 thousand hours in and persevering man perseverance mm. is, perseverance is everything in this industry it is Staying consistent, you know, mm. it's easy to be in the business, right? You may mm. find yourself doing one or two commercials, one or, do, one or two yeah. projects and stuff. And you may be like, man, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Like I fell out of love yeah, from yeah. acting. You know, I want to do other things and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you have the passion and the hunger to do it, you're going to find the consistency and the perseverance, right. like you said, to keep going and going to where you yeah. are at now. Yes, yes. I, I hear the, the. I was always told the people who make it are the ones who stick around, and and there's definitely nothing wrong with someone who realizes one day that maybe this is not their passion. Just like I did with football, I was like, "It's yeah. not my passion. I, this is not my my walk. This is not my journey." If you truly feel that, then definitely find something else to do. I tell everybody, this is not an easy industry to be in. If you can find something else to do, then please go do it because this is not for the faint of heart. Right, but. If this is truly your passion, truly your heart, if you truly have to do this until the day you die, stick in there and just continue to stick in there, persevere and just stay at it. And like you said, stay consistent and I promise you something will happen. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There you go. Uh, Marcus Brandon, actor right here on the Beat Break Morning Show with Sean Garvey, Star Kells, who is in Africa. And we are now by... We are now joined by DJ Rolon, who is with us this morning. What's going on, DJ Rolon? He's getting his life together. <laughs> there we go. What's up, man? What's up, fellas? What's up, my man? Pleasure. Not much, man. I'm tired of these daggone computers. Ask for updates, and I do the updates. And <laughs> I did the update yesterday, and now it took forever to come on. I'm like... Yeah, it's my phone. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to stay up with the stay stay up with the updates because the updates happen. Yeah. Technology is just moving too fast, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, man, I just used this computer yesterday, and I want yeah. to act fun. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that, crazy. Yeah, uh, what would we do without technology? I mean, I love. I it. think it would, I think we'll be more. I think we will be more much more smarter without technology. Maybe. Maybe so. Maybe, I, maybe it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely use Google a lot, but if I didn't have it, I'd probably depend on myself a lot more. But I'm yeah. a little scared of it too, especially with all this AI, which I'm I'm amazed by. It. I love it, but I'm a yeah. little, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little afraid of what what it may mean. Now you see oh, what's yeah. going on with China. <laughs> yeah, you see what's going on with those balloons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> those balloons in the sky. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm seeing three, four, five different white balloons in the sky. I'm, I'm getting scared now. Yeah, I used to get, I used to get excited. I used to get excited as a kid when I see balloons in the sky, but now I don't. 
<laughs> no, no. I get, I am, par- like Marcus, I am literally paranoid now every time I yeah. see a balloon in the sky. Man, you, you never okay, know so, what, what these people so, are. So no more balloons for, for, for celebrations and, and birthdays? <laughs> <laughs> balloons are not allowed. I was like, yeah, if I see one more balloon in the sky, I'm like, you, you better get in the house. Get in the house right now. Right. <laughs> house right I was going to say happy birthday, Sean. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, we still celebrating my birthday, by the way, Aquarius. Oh, season. nice. Shout happy birthday, my man. Thank you. Thank you. It's a celebration. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actor Marcus Brandon, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, the mayor of Kingston, which you can see right now on Paramount Plus. Let's get into yeah. it because, uh, like I said, I, I keep reiterating, I am totally hooked to yeah. mayors of Kingston. And also, shout out to Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus has been giving us a, a lot of great shows, a lot of yeah, great content yeah, these days. Um, so, you play a deadly leader of yeah. the organization the bloods yeah the, yeah. the bloods oh we yeah. okay yeah, yeah. all right how we got to talk about it how did you land that gig and, and this is another experience for you because you know as an actor as, as yourself part of your job is studying studying yeah. doing the research on your character or the organization that you're going to be representing. So talk to us mm-hmm. about that experience that uh, drew you into the character of, of a, a deadly leader. I mean, not just a member, a leader yeah. of yeah, the Bloods, yeah. man. Let's talk about that. That's, 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 that's heavy, man. It's heavy. That's, that's You know, just and even to be real, uh, when I was offered the role, you know, all the things went through my mind, like, do I want to play a quote unquote thug? Do I want to play a gang member as a black male? Do I, do I want to, to go this route? But as you say, I watched, I watched uh, Mayor Kingstown like an episode before my audition to get the tone of the show to see how the rhythm is. Yeah. And first episode, like you, season one, I was hooked. I was like, oh man, this is how they doing it? Okay, this is a good show. And as more I started to watch the show, I realized that it wasn't just simple black and white. It wasn't just about these uh, quote unquote criminals doing bad things and the law enforcement deals. They really was digging into the racism and the 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 uh, miscare and the unfair treatment that takes place in prisons and when these members are incarcerated. And um, I really appreciate that about the show. And I was like, oh, this is more, this is about more. This character is layered. And Diedrich is, even though he's deadly, he's intimidating and he has to be that way. He's the leader of the bloods. He can't, you know, even if you align or a prideful or a general in the military, you cannot look weak to the, your opponents or even your fellow members because everyone's looking towards you. You have to present yourself a certain way and that's how Diedrich, but he's a true product of his environment. But he's also wants better for his fellow members and his community. He wants to legitimize his businesses. He wants to go the right path, but he still is a product of his environment. If you watch the show, he gets mixed up in a deal that leads mm-hmm. him down a path that makes yeah. things difficult for him, along with other cast members. And you know what? Can you say is it's, it's unfortunate part of his life, but. I grew up in, like I said, I grew up in so many different environments. I grew up in the hood at times, and I, yeah. I, I know members of the, this organization and other gangs, and I was able to kind of pull from that experience, man, being around it and just understanding that, you know, everyone has their reasons for, for what they do, and mm-hmm. everyone may not agree with them, everyone may not believe in them, but they still have their reasons, and for them, those reasons are valid, and for them, those reasons a lot of times are justified. And that's no different for Diedrich. He has his reasons for being the leader of the Bloods. He has his reasons for making the moves he's making. And um, to really, really see this character, you're gonna have to watch to, to yeah. dig in. Yeah, uh, me and Roland, we know the history of the Bloods. And mm-hmm. um, it's a very, intriguing history to mm-hmm. learn about an organization that started out 
mm. doing this, but transitioned into something else. Yeah. And to be a part, to, to play the role of a character of an organization that is not fictional at all, it is mm -hmm. the real yeah. deal. Um, it, it, it gravitates you even more to the character, to the person playing it, because, you know, I, I'm a person who believes in the cause and effect of life. Like mm -hmm. the root is, here's what happened in the past to why this person is the way that he or she mm -hmm. is and why they mm -hmm. are a part of this family, of this organization, where there's some things that you portrayed as the character, what are some things that resonated with you that you could relate to playing this character? You know, like what, what were some things that resonated to you? Yeah, for, for me personally, it, it definitely goes back to the um, the justification of, of his reasons, what his inner thoughts are mm -hmm. of, you know, I'm in this situation and I'm just doing what I need to do to, to survive. I'm doing what I have to do because there's a line of people who are depending on me. And, um, and I'm not saying I necessarily go through this world with ill intentions, yeah. but I'm all, I do have the mentality of, I'm gonna go out here every day. I have kids, I'm gonna go out here every day and make sure that all my moves and intentions for that day is to empower my kids and to provide a better life for them. And yeah. a lot of my decisions come with that behind it. And I'm gonna do what I have to do to make sure that they are better off than I was when I was a kid and better off than my parents were when they were kids. And I believe that's the same way that Diedrich moves to the world. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, how long, uh, I know you're talking about this particular character. Um, yeah. have, are you, does it take you a long time to really kind of master the character that you're portraying? I think um, that's that's a great question, my man. I don't. I wouldn't. I, master would be a hard thing to to say because I believe nobody. These characters aren't perfect, and I, I get what you're saying as far as me and golf immersing myself into this character. Right. But by immersing myself into this character, I definitely get the foundation. doesn't Doesn't take too long um, because it's already in me. Everything mm. you know, you're you're you have this vast imagination. And once you have these skill sets of training to be an actor, you know how to break down the character development, how to build this right. character from the ground up. But then a lot of it for me is just trusting in myself and trusting in my thoughts of that character as I move through the script of how that he's gonna react the way he's react. When he hears things that people are saying, he's gonna react the way Diedrich is going to react because he's a person and he has different qualities and he reacts different ways to different things and um, he's not perfect and there's going to be flaws within him so pretty much just letting him and myself have the freedom to be vulnerable right. to listen and to react naturally and I just let it go and, and just trust in it and trust in myself yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. What are What are some of the things that you do? You know, before you get out of the trailer and mm -hmm. you step on the set, what are some of the things that you do to prepare yourself before the director says playback action? Yeah. Yeah. Um, being Being in in wardrobe is is a big thing for me. Being in the shoes of the role is a big thing for me because these are not my normal clothes that I would wear. And once I get into that clothing, um, I kind of just transform. And then I start thinking like the character. And even off camera, I'm just thinking like the character and reacting everything through the eyes of, of that of that character, Diedrich. And um, the, the script breakdown and all that, that's already been done before. I'm, I'm stepping out on set. So all that's done and I'm trusting that I'm just pretty much being in my own head thinking and just relaxing and um, freeing up my, my instrument, my body to receive. You know, I want all stress 
that's not related to the character to to be gone and I let it go. And so that I have no tension that's going to block me from being truthful as a character. Because if I have stress, if I'm worried about, I don't know, bills or some other issues with uh, friends or family members or partners, if that's on my brain or in my body, that stress yeah. is going to block me from being the best right. actor I can be to portray that character at the time. So I try to just release all that. Mm. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, and it can be a distraction too as an actor. You want to you want to bring your A game. Oh, you want sure. to give, give it all you got. Especially yeah. in Hollywood, man. You don't want to <laughs> you only get too many chances. You got to <laughs> come right. 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 <laughs> We're on season 2 of Mayor of Kingston. DJ Roland, do you watch the show or do you need to catch up to speed? I need to catch up with the speed because Tanya and I are trying to get uh Tanya's my wife. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> trying to watch more shows together because uh, of our timing and everything. Because mm. um, um, definitely I heard about it and I heard great things about it. And I definitely want to catch up with that on a, on a regular basis and whatnot. So it's just that with my style of life and, yeah. and, and John knows this, it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get it when you can get it for sure. But it's a it's yeah. a great show to binge watch, and I tell I'm I'm in season two. I come in on episode two of season two, but I okay. tell people it's it's worth going back to season one and starting from episode one because the show is just really good. And I and I promise you, after watching the first episode of season season one, you're going to be hooked, and you're going to yeah, be like, so I like that. Yeah, executive produced by the great Antoine Fuqua, of course, yeah. uh, with a lineup of a-list actors hugh dylan michael beach diane mm -hmm. west and of course jeremy renner um yeah. i gotta ask you you know because our our thoughts and prayers still go out yeah, to jeremy you know uh, and his family and stuff like that it's great news that he is still in recovery mode um what was your reaction when you got the news about jeremy's injuries mm. Uh, I, I was I was I was fearful for him. Um, I've heard about it. I heard um, that he, you know he almost lost his life on on the scene. And for, fortunately, there was a friend close by, our neighbor, that was a doctor that helped save his life. But you know who would have known that that person wasn't there? And just knowing the trauma he, he went through, my thoughts were about him as a human being and one. The best for him you know because i can't imagine what he's going through um being i've been through a few near-death experiences at a younger age and i know when those things happen none of this hollywood stuff matters you know none of this these achievements are money none of this matters at the end of the day and i'm sure this it's the same for him that and i'm glad that he's had the time to be around the loved ones because those relationships is really what what is this in this world is things that we should prioritize and he's taking that time he's taking his time to recover he's recovering um a lot better than they expected he, he's becoming mobile and i'm happy for him but as far as going through my mind it was really just you know praying for his his life and his recovery and yeah. his loved ones yeah yeah i could not see anybody playing the main role of the mayor yeah other than jeremy renner he does an an exceptional and amazing job i mean he was already a great actor before the series yeah. came to light but mm -hmm. jeremy plays such a great role and he's known for a lot of dramatic roles right yeah, but yeah. he's played such a great role as being a mayor for the mm -hmm. show and, and i just could not see anybody replacing him if something were to happen to jeremy mm -hmm. you know and, and i'm glad that uh, Jeremy's in recovery mode because we we want to see season three. We want to see season yeah. three, season four, <laughs> season five Definitely. of Mayor of Kingston. You know, I cannot see Mayor of Kingston only doing two seasons and that's it. Yeah. I cannot see that. It's definitely going to be more. There's a, you know, uh, if you see the show, there's a lot of characters on the show and a lot of avenues that they can take the show in direction they in they can take it in but definitely Jeremy's killing it as the mayor uh everyone loves him 
in that in that role. If you watch the show, then you know that it's kind of those shows where anybody can die in the episode. So that's always has you kind of on the edge of your seat because you just never, it doesn't matter who you are on the show. Anybody can 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 get it. Now, now, yeah. now you saying now because you said all of that, tell yeah. our listeners, especially DJ Roland, because he needs to catch up to speed. Tell the listeners, the viewers, what the show is actually about. Oh, so the, the show is about this family, McCluskey family, who Jeremy's character, Mike McCluskey, is a and he was the, the Miller brother. And what they do and what he does essentially is he's a power broker or, or some may consider a peace broker between the justice system, law enforcement and the prisons and, and criminals uh, within our the uh, inmates of the prisons. So that he brokers deals to keep the peace. Sometimes he does things that favor the, the gangs and the inmates. And sometimes he does things that favor the law he just makes sure that both sides are happy. But as you can imagine, when you're dealing with politics in mm -hmm. this way between these groups, a lot of things can happen. A lot of things can go wrong. And that's essentially what happens in this show is things go wrong. And then there's a domino effect if one yeah. thing goes wrong. And mm -hmm. then you owe people things. And there's a lot of people who are who are <laughs> in your pockets as the mayor and He's trying to please everybody, and, and you can only imagine the chaos that comes from that. Yeah. Um, for sure. It's, it's one of those shows where you can see a lot of, you're going to see a lot of corruption, right? You're going to see a lot of corruption, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of street drama, street crimes and stuff. You know, I mm -hmm. there was one scene, and, and I don't want to give it away, but there was one scene in the episode, uh, I believe it was either on season one or season two. It was one of those seasons, right? And mm -hmm. uh there was a pit bull. Oh. Yeah, the pit bull yeah. scene, right? It was in the car. <laughs> it was in the car. Yeah. The guy in the car got shot yeah. up. And yeah. they sent this pit bull to go inside yeah. the car to finish the job. Oh, I'm man. like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I, <It> gets, <laughs> I, I got a question on this. With this type of uh environment of the uh of the project it sounds like there's no women involved in this uh there, there is <laughs> there is there's quite there's quite a bit of few a, a handful of women who are involved um jeremy uh mike mccluskey has a secretary who's a prominent part of the show he's there's also um sex workers who are very much part of negotiations in the story itself. One of them, particularly, um, I think uh, Iris, who uh, played by, by Emma, she's a big part of the show because she, I don't wanna give spoilers, but right. she wants to get out of the life that she's in. But okay. the person who is her boss is an inmate and old quote unquote friend of Mike McCluskey of Jeremy's character. Yeah. Right. And, Things get a little crazy with that. And then you got Diane. Um, Diane West. West, who, yeah. you know, a phenomenal actress, uh, big time, um, who plays his mom. And she, she gets more involved in the second season. Uh, she's in the first season as well. And then you have uh, the prosecutors in the DA office. Like, there's, there's definitely a woman uh, who probably, but there's so many characters in the show. That's, that's right. the thing. There's a lot of character development, a lot of characters that there's so many different stories and layers. <laughs> yeah, because sex is usually kind of the calm, the calmer in this. And I was like, yeah. the way things are sounding, I'm like, there's no <laughs> sex involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they definitely have that involved, but it, it comes it comes with a price. <laughs> right, saying. exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, man. Like I said, Paramount Plus been rolling out a lot of great shows, you know, like this one. Of course, you have The Game and you got Yellowstone. Yes. Uh, you know, big shout out to Paramount Plus for yeah. the great content they've been giving us. So definitely, if you haven't seen it already, make sure y'all check it out. Mayor of Kingston or Kingstown rather, Mayor of Kingstown, uh, available on Paramount Plus. Now, what other projects are you currently working on outside of Mayor of Kingstown? 
Oh, yeah. I just, uh, another show of mine, I was on episode three of Poker Face, just aired uh, two or three weeks ago with Natasha Leon. She's from uh, American Pie and Orange is New Black and Russian Dolls. She's the lead character. And every show is essentially an anthology. So, like, most of the cast is new every episode because she runs from town to town. And she has, like, a natural lie detector inside of her that helps her know when people are lying. She helps people solve the mystery case of the week or murder case of the week, as you say. It's by the same writers as Knives Out, uh, the movies, and it's just very entertaining. Definitely worth watching. I was in episode three with Lil Rel, and um, it, it, was, uh, it was such a great experience. I wouldn't place it for anything. I got some uh, other projects coming out, but under NDA, I can't speak to you on too much now, but you will be seeing me again on your screen, more of me on your screen. And I have an Indian film that's going to be shooting in the Philippines soon. Oh. Uh, that I'm excited for. It's going to be a great adventure. I've never been. And speaking of traveling and experiencing new cultures, this is a great opportunity to not only get that while acting, but, you know, all in one. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, well, some fun facts about you. When you're not shooting, when you're not on set, what are some fun things that you like to do on your time off? Um, I'm a, I am ai love um business development to be honest i am an entrepreneur i have a cybersecurity business and share co-working business and a few other things real estate so i'm always trying to find the, the next business to help grow my portfolio but outside of that when i'm more relaxing i've been riding my motorcycle a lot enjoying that we've been having a unusual warm winter in new york city <laughs> so i've been able to ride my motorcycle here and there um i've been enjoying it not complaining uh you know some people may say some things if something's not right if it's too warm at this time of the year but i yeah. enjoy it um i love snowboarding and and being with my kids man and then you know food i just, i love eating food man. <laughs> Indian food new restaurants any food cuisine i love it i read somewhere that your favorite foods or some of the foods that you love to eat are tacos oh man they should write a book about me and tacos. I, I love tacos. <laughs> I, might, I might be like the Bubba Gump of tacos, man. <laughs> like tacos is really, I don't know. They got a special place in my heart. They just they just hit the spot every time. Do you uh, make tacos yourself? Because you know now that you, you can make your own taco. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I used to, I used to, I used to celebrate Taco Tuesdays in my house every Tuesday for the longest. <laughs> I don't have as much time anymore, but that used to be my yeah. day. Um, and I used to really be big into fish tacos. I don't eat meat as much these days, but fish tacos were always like the sweet spot. Okay. Mm. I do have a question. Is there a particular actor and or actress that you would like to work with in the near future? Like, Ooh. Ooh. That's, a, yeah. that's a tough question, man. There's so many. There's so many, so many people that I grew up watching that I want to still work with. Like I want to work with Angela Bassett and Viola Davis and Mill Street and Daniel Day Lewis and Denzel and Will Smith. I would love to be in a movie with Denzel and Will Smith together. That would that would be great. That would be good. I heard I heard they're yeah. working on some type of project. Um, Will Smith and Denzel. I heard something. I did. I didn't read the whole snip of it, but they yeah. had like a little thing. Like they might be working together real soon. Oh man, I guess we gotta get on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep my eye on it, man. I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to. I gotta get there before Michael B. Jordan get there. I gotta, I gotta do it too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we yeah. can be in the movie too. We can all be in the film together. But I uh, can see. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I was gonna say this real quick. Sorry, Sean. That Michael B. Yeah. Jordan and Will Smith are working on I Am Legend. Sequel. I saw that. So hopefully, yeah. you can um, be part of that. Part of one of the characters. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. That would be great too, man. I'm open to receive. You know, the, the any opportunities that are right for me, definitely. Um, they're coming and I'm excited for the future of my career. I'm definitely awesome. ready. Yeah, absolutely, man. And and I love the fact that you got a degree. And, you know, this is going back to the fun mm -hmm. facts of Marcus Brandon. You got a degree in computer engineering. Yeah. Right? You know, you know what's so fascinating? I meet so many people mm -hmm. in the industry that got a degree in something, whether it's marketing or mm -hmm. criminal justice or computer engineering engineering like you but they are all actors <laughs> they're all actors and actresses so <laughs> yeah. um 
I, I actually, I majored in acting when I first went to college. And then I said, I, for myself, I was like, coming from the humble beginnings, I was like, I, I think I want something a little bit more financial secure and, and something that, something yeah. that I knew the future would grow in the future and continue to grow with technology and new computers would be around. So if anything happened, I would always be able to find a job with computers in some way. Um, and, and so I switched it to computer engineering. And yeah. uh, I think maybe not to, not to knock my school and their actors program, but maybe if I went to, you know, Yale or NYU, I might stuck with the actor degree, but I went to Middle Tennessee State University. So I was like, you know what? I think there's, I probably could find other ways to become an actor and, and, and um, depend on that. But I was like, I'm gonna go with computer engineering. They had a great engineering uh, department, uh, yeah. one of the top programs. So I, I went with that route. Again, not to knock their acting program, but I think it was, it was a better decision for myself. And I just love computers. Mm, yep, yep. Uh, engineering, that's a part of the STEM I don't know mm -hmm. what you call it, but the STEM thing, you know, science, yeah. technology, mm -hmm. engineering, and math, uh, those are the four, the four yeah. powerful sources that will lead you to lucrative jobs. Now, if we can just right, only right. add the extra E in there, entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, yeah, add the extra E in there between engineering yeah. and mathematics, science, yeah. technology, engineering, <laughs> entertainment, and yeah. math. Yeah. yeah, I think there will be more and more people in entertainment. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I, I think more and more people they, are coming to it. I, I, it's definitely yeah. more saturated these days than before. You know, there's a lot more opportunities with different platforms, all these streaming platforms and YouTube. And that's the one thing that I'm kind of scared of with AI. I think the AI is going to give even more opportunities for someone in the middle of nowhere to create a cinematic project perfect with AI. They could just have their phone, a, a couple of actors, and they could create a cinematic, perfect cinematic movie. Yeah. AI just but goes it, in and fix it. But you know, but, I'm an old school type of person yeah. though. I, I still love to go to the movie theater. I still love Damn. to go to the movie theater. I still love to go to the drive-in movies. Yeah. I still... Yeah, I still love to go to the $1 movie theaters. I don't think they have any of those anymore. No, they don't. They it's rare. <laughs> it's very, it's no, very not, rare to find not, But true story, though, here in Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. I went to a $1 movie theater, and this was back in 2018. Oh, wow. Yes. That wasn't wow. even that long ago. It yeah. was one in, I want to say it was Fayetteville, Georgia. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I'm heard of. I thought it was obsolete. <laughs> I, thought I was no more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that. I'm just saying they got one blockbuster video store here in America. They got to be at least <laughs> one movie dollar theater somewhere here in the <laughs> someone here in the United States of America. Yeah. I know in Jersey <laughs> we got a few drive-ins. It's not the dollar one, but there's a drive-in theater. I still like that nostalgia of that. Yeah. For sure. I love it. I love it, man. So before we let you go, because uh, I know you got to go, Marcus, uh, of course, we are celebrating 50 years of hip hop. And mm. we're, we're going to do something on each of our episodes between now and the end of the year to commemorate mm. 50 years of hip hop. And, you know, this show was built off of hip hop. That's why it's called oh. Beat Break, right? The Beat oh. Break Morning mm. Show. So you got to tell us, what was the first hip-hop album? We're going to ask you three questions. <laughs> what, what was the first hip-hop album you purchased? That's oh, question number one. Man. The first one, I, I think the first one was AT Aliens. Whoa. Yeah. Outcast? Wow. Yeah, Outcast, ATL was wow. like the very first one. I was like, oh, I, I want to, I got to get this one. You know, being the South, you know, they, they were they were the ones. And, and that album was just, I mean, it, it's you're up to, cool it's in the classic. You were in school when you got it, didn't you? Was that what? <laughs> yeah, in school, you were in school when you got it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some <Something> way. <laughs> right, right. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. Okay, so that was your first album. album. All right, mm -hmm. second question. 
what is in your playlist right now all things considered rap uh, or hip-hop what is in what is in marcus brandon's playlist i'm gonna say once once you shuffle around the kids <laughs> the kids uh animated movie theme songs um i'm gonna say is as I, I i love fkj uh oh. sego um fkj stands for i think french kiwi juice uh dope multi-instrumentalist with a lot of jazz undertones um little uh baby little baby is in there uh keep some future tim's whiz kid is in there um uh, dark I keep keep him rotating um but yeah and feature yeah. okay all right the newest the newest joints the newest yeah but the newest but yeah I mean I gotta keep my I keep my J. Cole on rotation and my Kendrick on rotation um and I just I was I was just listening to some uh Tupac and Bone Thug <laughs> earlier today <laughs> Bone Thug okay, <laughs> You got to throw in some old school in there. So you, yeah, you got to sure. balance. Okay. All right. One more question. Who would win in a rap battle? Uh, the baby or little baby? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to give it to little baby just because, I mean, they both got unique styles, but I think little baby's a little bit more maybe innovative a little bit more quick on the toes i think but they're both very entertaining but i don't know little baby i would, I would give it to him wow what about, what about you you saying the opposite who you coming who you claiming I, 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 I'm, I'm a dj and, and it's me the, the, all i can say is Somebody named Baby will win. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, we gotta actually specify. Are we talking about Baby yeah. from Cash Money? Like which baby we talking about? <laughs> we talking about Little Baby and the Baby. That's that's okay. That's, but so that's, Baby, aka Birdman, is not included no, in this no, conversation. No, no. He ain't okay, about that. he ain't talking about that, man. Uh, about <laughs> little Baby and Dub Baby. And I say, baby, somebody named Baby will win. That's all I can say. Somebody with Baby. Okay. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I can't figure yeah, it out. Me either, All right. Uh, you gonna leave me, <laughs> leave me out here on the island then. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcus Brandon, man, I appreciate you for coming on the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, once again, he is on Mayor of Kingstown, available on Paramount Plus. So, yo, yeah. you all make sure you check out his character, Diedrich, uh, as the image intimidating deadly leader of the bloods man so this show and even his character and his scenes it definitely keep you in suspense so make sure y'all check it out uh season two available as well as season one on paramount plus man any uh last remarks any shout outs you want to give before you sign off uh definitely hit me up if, it, if even actors who are coming up hit me up if you want some advice marcus lorenzo brandon on ig and uh just wishing everybody the best man thanks again for having me man great oh you. man thank you so much man you're welcome anytime to the beat break morning show atmosphere brother we really appreciate it much success to you and uh thank much more in your acting career man uh, definitely. Uh, definitely thank you Thank you All so right. much, Marcus Brandon, ladies and gentlemen. Mayor of Kingstown. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Season I promise. One. I yeah, promise. Season two. Promise. <laughs> Catch up. <laughs> All right. Catch up. Thank you so much. All right. It's the Beat Break Morning Show. Uh, we are at the top of the hour, DJ Rome. So we're going to have more of the Beat Break Morning Show with myself, yours truly, Sean Garvey, and DJ Rollum, and Star Kells, who is here in the spirit. So stay tuned for this station ID. And we got more on the way next, right here on the Beat Break Morning Show. Y'all keep it locked. All right, bro.
Welcome back to the Peak Break Morning Show. This is the third hour of the Beat Break Morning Show. Sean Garvey, DJ Roland. We got the caffeine and energy drink mix coming up with DJ Roland, a very special tribute to one of the best hip hop groups of all time, De La Soul. We got that coming up in just a few moments. Shout outs to actor, the one and only Marcus Brandon from Mayor of Kingstown for coming on. I had to make sure that I didn't catch myself continuously saying Kingston is Kingstown. So I don't want anybody to go online and search for Mayor of Kingston and be like, wait a minute. I thought Sean Garvey said this was a show. This ain't a show. This is something else. No, Mayor of Kingstown. That's where you can check out Marcus Brandon on Mayor of Kingstown, Paramount Plus. DJ Rollum, mm. back on the Beat Break Morning Show. Yes. Uh, Star Kells in Africa. She might as well just live there. She's back there again. I didn't know that. She's back there. Yep, for business purposes. Was she trying to be a dual resident? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. But then again, maybe she likes it better there and than here in America. I mean, that, well, that's she won't, like Steve, she won't be like Stevie Wonder then just actually move there. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Anything is possible. You know, we've had so many public figures that went to Africa, possibly wanted to move there. But they went to Africa anyway. Chappelle, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, of course, Akon is from there. Right. So many, so many people. You know, if Tupac was still alive, he would definitely, definitely not only go to Africa, but he probably would move there. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. If Tupac was still alive. Mm-hmm. You know, I had this thing, I had this thing in my head earlier today where, you know, because I, I keep seeing all these documentaries that's getting ready to come out or already have came out about Tupac Shakur's life and what people did not know about Tupac Shakur. And I was just like, you know, if Pac was still alive and he went to Africa, if he chose to come back to America from Africa, he would never ever be the same. No. No. He would never ever be the same. He would no. be like, man, forget this thug life, forget this, forget rap music, forget all, forget all this. No, he, he, there's no telling what else he could have accomplished a if he came actor. back from Africa. A great actor. That's what he I would think. be what? A great actor. A better actor. Yeah. He was a he great actor, but a better yeah. actor. But I think yes. he would have definitely be something else beyond acting and rapping. That's just my personal thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it is. Maybe, it running, is for, maybe running for a president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't I, laugh. I, I, I don't know. I don't, don't know. laugh. I mean, I'm not like laughing. I said, run, I I said laughing. running for president. I didn't say becoming one. I, I, I didn't say he... he, he I'm looking at his character. Mm. I would think he would not try to do anything in politics uh, per se because of how how he was. Uh, we're looking at his character, and definitely running for a, a high office like that, uh, such as president, wouldn't be in his limelight. He will probably do something more that will be. Like he would have had a, a big affiliation with uh, uh, BLM, so he would have definitely been part of that like crazy, and probably would have started it a whole lot early. Probably would have started that back probably back in the in the nineties, knowing him. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, but you know, we just only going by speculation, right? Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. But he, he, you know, he did leave a legacy while on Earth. He did leave a legacy. He left a mark. Oh, huge, huge mark. Absolutely. I mean, I just yeah. got when I personally didn't like him. I mean, 
Only reason why I didn't like him because when he first started as a rapper, when Brenda had a baby, I'm like, okay, all right, no thug stuff, good. And then he came out with that thug stuff. I'm like, oh God, here we go again and whatnot. And I mean, I'm not knocking his his um, his craft. It's just that I got at me personally, I got tired of hearing thuggish stuff. I wanted to hear more. You wanted of, you wanted the conscious side. You wanted the yeah. conscious side of pop. Yeah, I'm like you start oh. off like that. You keep it like that. You know, you weren't. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. I got. I understand why he did it, mm-hmm. but I just like, dog, why? <laughs> but That's I mean, if he didn't give us the thug stuff, he didn't. If he didn't give us the thug stuff or the the other side of pop, we would have had heard songs like. You know, I get around. Yeah, get them up. I mean, we can go the list. Right, <laughs> Tell me right, how you right. want it. Yeah. Tell me how you want it. <sighs> um, so so many songs. Uh, you know, all a catalog, on. a catalog. Yeah, all eyes on. Come with me, yeah. Hail Mary. I mean, he was the actual first. Uh, artist to, to go platinum with two CDs on an album. The first artist to actually do that. He he broke a lot of records before stuff, you know, how people got rolling, you know, into that. So he did a lot. He started yeah. off a lot. And I commend him on that. Yeah. Whatnot. But yeah, he would have he I don't think he would have gone to politics like that as a president. He would have done some other stuff to make it more noticeable about um, about who we are as as a people. I think he would have done that because he, he believe me. I don't think he would have really worried about the other ones not as much as he worries about the color of, of his skin. That's the thing that I feel, in my personal opinion. I think yeah, um, you know, I I think just by the nature of him and the songs that he has put out and stuff it would have motivated him to at least try it, at least run. Hmm. I'm not saying he would win. Uh, I know that. You know, but at least run for president. He, he, he would have definitely been an independent. He would definitely not been a Republican. I know that for sure. So, you know, you, you wouldn't be a Democrat either? No, he would have been no Democrat, no. He would have been a pure independent. He'd probably be the most popular independent in history if he had done it like that. Hmm. That's my opinion on that. He would definitely not be care none of those parties. He does not care about either one of those parties here or there. So I'm just saying. He would have created his own party called the Thug Life Party. Probably. <laughs> the Thug <laughs> Party. The Thug Party, yeah. The Thug Party, yeah. And there he would have had a lot of folks following it too. And whatnot. But guess what? Guess what? Uh, by, by saying it like that, they would have said that, was, that would be like a cult party. Mm. That would probably would have called it a cult party because if you get a bunch of us, thug people or negative, well, I wouldn't say negative, more hardcore, I would say, into a party, they would have called it a cult. That's what they probably would have done. Mm. Well, man, we will never know. We will never know, yeah. But nah. somebody may, may think about it. I mean, they listen to our show, so Somebody like, Ooh, you know, do the old. You come up with an idea, yeah. 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 You know, they better cut us a check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't they forget, they're gonna, gonna take our idea and yeah. put it into fruition. You, you better cut us a check. There you go. There you go. There you go, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what a great way to talk about this as we continue to celebrate 50 years of hip hop. Uh, of course, if you listen to my show, The Mental Space, on WAOK 1380 AM in Atlanta. I had Sparky D call in ah! to give her, yeah, to give her two cents on what she thought about the recent hip hop tribute performance at the 2023 Grammys. I openly said on the mental space that I had to give it a C minus. Really? Yep. I gave you it a gave C minus. I gave it a C minus, and Sparky D gave it a C. 
Okay. okay. At, at least it, at least she was more nice to do that than me. She gave it a C. I gave it a C minus. A C minus is close to a D. Right, exactly. And and the reason why I sort of agree with you, because I'm sorry I have to say this. But the 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 new uh, the actual station that actually aired it did a, a horrible part by placing it on commercials during a very important part of um, of the show, and I really was ticked off about that. And you had to go on other platforms just to see it. So I really blame the Atlanta station, if I can say it. Say it. Just say it. Go ahead. Say it. Say call letters. CBS. CBS 46, you get a huge F for that because yeah. you did not allow a lot of the performers be seen in um, the the airways of Atlanta, you know, because everybody from on social media was talking about what was going on and we people in Atlanta didn't see that. So I give it an F. I couldn't give it a C minus because of what I saw. I'm like, what and, I, and the last person I remember seeing uh, was Queen, but um, Queen Latifah. And I did see Ice T. I did see I can't remember his name, but I did see a member from De La Soul was on there. Yeah, we'll, see, we'll get into that in just a few moments. Right, uh -huh. But it's just it's just sad, man. I'm like, man, ugh. But before yeah. we get into that, um, by I gotta, the way, by the way, CBS 46, uh, of course, is also is now known as W A N F. People oh, yeah. like people from Roland, like Roland is Atlanta, right? Roland is Atlanta. He's still Baltimore, but he's Atlanta as well. Uh, he knows it, like I mean, you know, I work in media. Uh, we still know it as CBS 46, but down here it's known as WANF now. I think that ever since WANF, ever since CBS 46, we branded itself and renamed it as WANF. Things started to become a bit hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, it that. has. I agree. It has. It has. Yeah. But, I got, but I got some trivia. <clears throat> Not really a trivia, but I got a question for you. Okay. And Tony was asking me about that earlier this morning. She said uh, that Ja Rule, she, no, she believed that Ja Rule was the first rapper that sang, that sung. Do you believe that? I say no. No. She no. believes that. And I said, no, Ja Rule wasn't, you know. Maybe she meant, maybe she meant to say Ja Rule is the first rapper to sing with a very white voice. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, is it really a very white voice or is it like a like the angry gutter street voice? Like, what would that be without you? What would that be without you? <laughs> Maybe she meant that. He's the first rapper to sing in that type of voice. That street gutter sound. Okay, yeah. It, did, it didn't have any, like, you know, tweak in it to make it sound good or anything. That was just pure raw in the studio. <laughs> what I want to be without you. <laughs> I was saying. But, but historically was... speaking... I don't even call that. No, he's not the first rapper. He's not the te technically he's not the first rapper to sing. He's not technically, he's not technically, which I told her that. I said Jaru was not the first. I told her I was gonna bring it on in the, into the show. So I was like, yeah. so I will let her know. What was what was her response? She was like, Are you sure? And I like, Yeah. No, no. He is not the he is not the first one. No. We we got a we got a laundry list. You got a lot of lessons. Then she said Heavy D. And I said Heavy D didn't sing. He just had a he had one of his first soft songs when L Cool J came out with his his, his songs, song. his songs were more for the women, though. He was the overweight lover. Right. He was considered yeah. the overweight lover. The overweight lovers in the house. He just right. made a lot of songs for women. Right, right. So ugh. so I said, uh-uh. I, I had to like really think about it. And I ain't had a chance really figure stuff out yet because she threw that into me and I'm like hmm I gotta really check that out and whatnot but I know it wasn't Ja Rule. I know it wasn't yeah. no no mm -mm. Yeah. Ja Rule yeah. out of all the artists Ja Rule 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Nah. Okay. 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 I mean, just by herself, Tanya, shout out to Tanya, by the way, uh, Tanya Townsend now. You know, just by her mentioning Ja Rule, is, is keeping him relevant to a certain extent. Yeah, he did some you know. hits. Yeah, I mean, he had some hits. I wouldn't, I'm not shooting him down. Or you know. He got a pretty good catalog. He got a pretty good catalog. Yeah, I mean, Jay-Z helped bring him out on his song, Can I Get a yeah. What What? So that's how Ja Rule really came out from that he, hit song. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay-Z put him on. Mm-hmm. DMX allowed him to sound like him. And 50 <laughs> Cent came man. in and 50 Cent <laughs> came in and crushed his career. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no no no! I'm sorry. No sound. No sound applause. No applause. No applause. I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. My bad. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, it just makes sense. His first album was Beanie Ben and Beachy. Mm. Beanie- <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. he came. You know, he came. He saw. He conquered. Right. JC came. DMX saw, and Fifty Cent conquered. Beanie yeah. Ben and Beachy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. All right. <laughs> we still on Tanya though. We still talking about Tanya. Okay. She, she got confused with PM Dawn and De La Soul for me. What? I was like what? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Wait, There's wait. You, she got P. Wait. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly, and uh, and for our listeners out there, uh-huh. she got PM. Was it PM Dawn? Uh huh. PM Dawn. Okay. PM Dawn confused with De La Soul. Uh huh. Hmm. Wow. Because she, think, she thinks they sound alike. And I'm like, yeah. No. <laughs> hell to the no. Yeah. So I'm like, nah, just, she was thinking because of a couple of songs. I can't think of those songs she said because hey, that threw me off. I'm like, wait a minute. No. He and Dawn and Daylight Soul. He and Dawn came out several years later after Daylight Soul. So I'm thinking like yeah. they in the late 90s and whatnot. Daylight Soul came out in, in, in 89, 90. Something like that's why I said several years. And that's and that's two different energies. I mean, kind of, you know, a little bit like on the conscious, uh, hippie, peaceful type of vibe and what have you, but you, you can't even put them up against each other in a versus battle. No. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. I love her, but no, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I'm done. Ah. yeah. But speaking of a, in 50 yeah. years, man, the 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 uh the celebration of it. I think um, with the mix that I'm going to put out with the De La Soul thing, you're going to be like surprised. Like De La Soul and Tribe and, and, and Jungle Brothers have a lot of stuff that helped start a new wave of hip hop in the early 90s that a lot of folks just did not know. You know? That is, they are considered as native tongues. Yes. Very. Thank yes. you for saying that. Wow, because I'm like, whoa, man, they just had so much influence, man, on 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 music that just saying the lyrics in their songs and stuff is it's just it's forever known. It's forever known. It would never yes. go away. It was always going to be reminded of of saying it, you know, of saying that phrase. Uh, Bonita yeah. uh, and things like that, like what Tribe did and whatnot. I'm like, see, <laughs> you will be very impressed with the selections that I that I put out and whatnot. And and even the old schooler people, like like when I say old schooler, I'm talking about like a Shaka Khan appreciate uh, uh, artists like them, man. And, and mm-hmm. the roots, like, thank you, you know that did their thing. I'm like, whew. Man, it's <laughs> yeah. That's my style of of, of, of music. I really like any bag on way. Period. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, um, got to interrupt this conversation real quick because I want to make sure that I plug my sponsor in and our sponsor, I should say, and that is Scent Just For You, Scents with an S actually, Just For You, ScentsJustForYou.com is still available on the website. Make sure you all get your scents, get your oils and other merch from Scents Just For You. We're going to have the owner and founder of Since Just For You, Raphael Williams, on the morning show real soon to talk more about it. You can actually go on my IG Facebook page at Sean Garvey ATL or at B-Break Radio to watch the uh, video mm-hmm. of Since Just For You. Make sure you get your sense. Now, you know, of course, Valentine's Day is over. We got to talk about that coming up. Um, it's, it's over, but it's still no excuse to not Go get your oil fragrance for your better half or your significant other and make them smell good. Make sure they smell good, you know, in 2023. So make sure you go to sensejustforyou.com and get 20% off of all purchases if you go to Sense Just For You, all right? And uh, the first 50 people to go on there are actually one of the first 50 people. I want to make sure I clarify that. One of the first 50 people to go on there will get a gift card by yours truly, Sean Garvey. So make sure you go to sensejustyou.com and get your oil fragrances and other merch. He doesn't just only sell oil fragrances, but he also sell paintings, pictures, posters of historical black figures and even calendars. Yeah, I know, I don't know not one person who does not need a calendar in their household. You want to keep up with your date. You want to keep up with your schedule. But you also want a calendar that reminds you of your ancestry, of Black history, and so much more. We are still in the month of February, and he got those calendars for you on deck. So go to sensejustforyou.com. Go there right now to get your oil fragrance, other merchandise, and once again, ladies and gentlemen, 20% 20% off of all purchases if you go there now. Make sure you tell Raphael and since just for you, the Beat Break Morning Show sent you. All right, just had to throw that plug in there real quick. Uh, back to DJ Rollum and yours truly, Sean Garvey's conversation on 50 years in hip hop. Okay, I got a question for you. Yep. Since you put a question out for a previous guest <clears throat> early in the show, I got three questions for you. Who is your top three hip hop people of the of fifty years of hip hop? Who are your top three? Oh, that, that's ooh. Ooh. In the entire fifty years of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nah, I can't go all the way way back because keep in mind I was born in eighty four. So I I can't go all the way back, right? I mm-hmm. can't even go in. I can't even go between eighty four and ninety. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do between eighty four and ninety. Mm-hmm. Well, no, maybe I can. I can. I can pick one between eighty four and ninety. You can pick three. You can pick three. Yeah, I can pick. Yeah, I can. I can only pick one from. You mm-hmm. know that'd be fair. I think that'd be fair for a question like this because I can just pick one from the eighties. I can pick one from the nineties and the two thousands. Right. Okay. So if I had to pick one from the 80s, it would definitely have to be, I'm going to say Big Daddy Kane. Okay. Big Daddy Kane. Okay. Is, is in my top three. Um, okay. Yeah. Can I get the explosions on that one? Let me see if I can get the explosion on that one right there. <laughs> okay. There we go. Big Daddy Kane in my top three. All right. Okay, the second one. Let's pick somebody from the nineties. The nineties, uh, of course. You know who I'm gonna have to go with. I'm, yeah, I'm, I already know. you already, I already know. know. DJ Ron already know. I already know. And I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna have to go with. It's a hard decision. Hard decision. I'm gonna have to go with the C O double M O to the end comment. Yeah, there you go. I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. Can we, 
Can I get an explosion on that one? Okay. No? Okay. Um, my thing's not working. All right. But yeah, Common in my top three of best hip hop MCs of all time, uh, if we're going from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So last but not least, let's do one from the 2000s. Man, that's this is a hard question. Hard question. Um, so in the 2000s, whew, man, I'm gonna have to say, uh, hmm. I'm gonna have to say Eminem. Eminem. Oh uh, man. Okay. I'm gonna have to say. Okay. I'm gonna have to say Eminem. Damn it. Damn it, man. <laughs> all right all right yeah no no you know what you know what i'm gonna say I, I have to do a tie i have to do a tie i'm sorry sorry it's gonna have to be between eminem and black thought interesting yeah okay and, okay. and, and yeah and if i'm gonna do a double from the 2000s <laughs> I might as well do a double in the 90s. Common and I'm gonna say Feral March. I'm gonna say Feral March. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, Feral March is one of the most underrated hip hop MCs of all time. Yes, he is. Yeah, he he has ghost written for a lot of artists, which a lot of people, some people don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I had to go back in the 80s and do another double up, <laughs> late 80s, yeah. uh, Big Daddy Kane and Rock Yeah. I think they did a, didn't they do a versus? No, uh, the ones that didn't know, it was Big Daddy Kane and KRS One. Oh, okay. I thought, okay, okay. Yeah, it, in my personal opinion, it should have been Big Daddy Kane and Rock Right, because I thought they were, that's yeah. what they were promoting was that. No, no. Was Big that Daddy Kane and was yeah. a, a versus of Chuck D and KRS One. That should have been a versus. Yeah, but then you got to include yeah, and then you got to include Public Enemy and BDP. Right, and all that. Yeah. I mean, they had to bring them in, but I'm just talking about because Chuck of D. Yeah, just style. Chuck D and KRS One. There you go. Yeah, that would have been like the most. Educational <laughs> versus. I would be, yeah, it'd be like a classroom, though. It'd be like a classroom versus. Oh, yeah. yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> you know, it'd be on some, you know, I know it'd feel, it'd feel like I'm at a protest demonstration if it was Chuck D and Carol's one <laughs> on versus. It would, it would feel like a protest demonstration. Mm -hmm. Big time. Because then they probably won't be rapping or, you know, they probably wouldn't be rapping off of their songs throughout the entire night. They just be like, Black people, we gotta stick together. And black people, save hip hop. I'm like, wait a minute, just get to the freaking records. Chuck D and Karras One, come on. He actually follows me. Chuck D follows me on Twitter, man. I just checked my Twitter account the other day, and I saw Chuck D. I'm like, he's following me. Wow. Chuck D is following anybody that's black. <laughs> Chuck D is following anybody that's black. I mean, hell. Mm. If you don't know you, if you don't know you, but you're a, a black person, like, okay, follow. That's wow. It. Yeah. Okay. It's probably um, only like it's probably only like five white people that he follow, and then everybody else is black. Because if, if anything, if anything, he's following. A member from the Beastie Boys. Ooh. Um, he's following. Following Eminem. Probably, probably following. Uh, what's what's that Caucasian guy who's running Loud Records? What's his name? Um, Steve Rifkin. Steve Rif Rifkin. Yeah, Steve Rif Rifkin. I was thinking Eminem too. I think he's following him. Do you think? <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He damn sure ain't following Michael Rappaport. No, Elon Musk. Either. I don't know. 
Definitely not Elon Musk. <laughs> Elon, no, 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 no. Elon Musk, he he, he got some nationality. He's, oh, he's not, okay. He's not, he's not 100% black. Oh, okay. But you still yeah. ain't following. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right, you've been listening to your, you may be a racist and you don't even know it. <laughs> Blend it in with the 50 years of hip hop conversation. Um, yes. So um, just to let you all know, in a couple of weeks, as we continue to commemorate 50 years of hip hop, uh, we will bring Sparky D on the Beat Break Morning Show. Ooh. She told me to send her some dates and she might bring some surprise guests mm. with an S guests on the morning show she got an event coming up in the atl in april in which i've been cordially invited to um so more details are on the way but yes um sparky d will come on and we do have a hip-hop legend coming on the beat break morning show we're, we're in talks i can't say who it is just yet but he is a hip-hop legend i give you a hint he made one of the most classical hip hop records of all time, but he did not perform at this year's hip hop 50th anniversary Grammys, which I feel he should have. Hmm. So we're in talks of bringing him on to be break on the show. His name was probably on the wall too, by the way. His, you know, they had the wall, the backdrop mm -hmm. of uh, acknowledging all of the hip hop pioneers right so I, I think they had his name on the wall wow because you know everybody like ll cool j said before you know during the grammy award ceremony he said i know i know we couldn't get everybody that you know this is just only just one show um the rest is to be continued so between now and december we're going to see more performances, more events, even more people that you did not get to see at the Grammys perform on stage. I, I think this should be at Madison Square Garden. I think there should be like a three hour concert event as a continuation from the hip hop 50th anniversary tribute at the Grammys. Why not do it at MSG in New York? What better place to do it but in the birthplace? Uh, uh, New York. Here's the thing. West Coast folks will have a problem with that. Why is that? I'm going to say, why you got to be, why has it be in, in New York? Why can't it be uh, uh, in, in a neutral spot? Because New York is the birthplace. And and Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg, shout out to Snoop Dogg and Dog Pound. Snoop Dogg came and crushed New York. <laughs> he crushed the I building. I the Source Awards. I know exactly where I was when all that <laughs> went down. I was in my dorm room in Tuskegee. Could not believe what I saw. I'll never forget that moment. Never. <laughs> I mean, we seen the video. You know, New York, New York. Him, corrupt, that's Dillinger, came and just crushed the buildings down, <laughs> New York. Mm. Like, come on, come on, Snoop, come perform with the, the past, present, and future of hip hop artists to make up for that at MSG. I know he wouldn't mind. He would do that. He wouldn't mind, but I just know some West no. Coast folks would have a problem with that. I don't think, I don't think no West Coast folks have it. You know, I mean, we're, we're far beyond. We far yeah, we from that whole East Coast, West Coast shenanigans. Mm -hmm. But that lasted so long. Yeah. That lasted so long. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We're going to give you my three. I'm going to give you my okay, three. Okay, what, what are your three? Your three. Uh, best hip hop. 80, 90s, and, and 2000s. All right. Okay. I'll say, I'll say the first one in the 80s. Because actually, I can't say the seventies, but I will just start off with the eighties. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Um, I would say that um, was a big influencer and whatnot. I would say Heavy D in the eighties. Okay. Because you know he's Heavy D. That that kind of like said to me, being a heavy guy, 
can be a good thing and not a bad thing. And he helped change that by him being a big guy and, and doing what he does. And people love him. Girls love him. I'm like, okay, he's having to shoot. Girls should all yeah. love him too. You know? <laughs> yeah, and this and this was before Notorious B.I.G. This was before exactly. Big Pun. This was before Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So he definitely is a big influence. There. And you know, like how I knew your 90s, you know who, who my 90s are. So you already know. But you said artists now. You didn't say groups. Okay. Artist. Well, he's we got, we're gonna have group. to do the groups. We're gonna have to do the groups on the next episode. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So, artists, let me go and change it then. Um, hmm. Change it up because you know that's all I listened to was in the nineties, and you can tell by some of the mixes I I've done over the years. You know who I really like. But I'm gonna say as an artist in the nineties. Hmm. Um, I would have to say because he was in my in my eighties um, mind, but I'm like he changed his style, which is a good thing. I would have to say uh, uh, LL Cool J, um, because okay, he came out. It's something. It is something about with you and these rap hip hop artists that love talking to women. You went from Heavy D to LL Cool J. Yep. Okay. Yep. And the 2000s, and, you know, and I said this um, before and whatnot, because of his style, because of how the music has changed. And he can change whatever is going on, because he's on so many different levels and whatnot, and I will support him. Drake. Drake. Whoa, whoa. I don't know if I want to give an explosion for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Drake. Drake. I mean, to is... be fair, we, we can do an explosion for that. We to to be fair. To be fair. Let me let me not sound like a hater this morning. <laughs> I'm not gonna be a hater. Okay, so why Drake? Because this is interesting. This is an interesting lineup of people that you pick. Every D who did songs and spoke to the women. LL mm -hmm. Cool J did songs and spoke to the women. And now Drake, who speaks to the women, sings to the women, mm -hmm. cries in front of the women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Just in my thoughts. Mm. Okay, so why Drake? Why Drake? I'm, I'm Drake? Because when Drake came out with, with Lil Wayne, I'm like, okay, he's talented. I'm, I'm thank you, Lil Wayne, for bringing him out. But then he went solo and he did some stuff. And I'm like, what in the world? He went from, I guess, whatever music they call it these days, to pop easily, easily. He's on billboards, all levels. Like it's very hard to be on all levels of what billboards on what billboard um, looks for. And he is really my only top artist currently right now that can flow. Like you give him a chance to, to, to go with a future and, and be phenomenal on that. And then you could put him with a, uh, a her and whatnot and be phenomenal on that. And just, they don't even have to worry about just singing a hook. He will have an actual um, line singing and have a hook doing it too. So he he's he's great. He's great. You know, I know he loves some Rihanna and, and, and Nicki, Nicki Minaj and all that stuff. I know he was upset especially when rihanna got down got two babies by asap and whatnot like that i can't even be the dad daddy, daddy, daddy you, you know daddy. drake you know drake can get with any woman that looks like a Nicki minaj or a rihanna because there are plenty of women that look like yeah them, i know, you know but he wanted them personally he rapped about this especially about Nicki. 
Let's just say we just did it anyway. I mean, <laughs> he put that in his lyrics. I mean, just to say it. And both of those ladies that he rapped and rapped along with and and all, and, and, and all that have moved on and, and got babies and families. And like, God dang, I know I can. I know I got some groupies out there that, that can do uh, fulfill that particular need, but it ain't them, you know? So it's, it's, it's a trip, but Drake, Drake is hands down for me, man. I'm like, he can switch it up. I just like mm. how he's so versatile with his talent. It's not just one style. It's like future is all one style. Like he's using what, uh, I can't forget his name. Uh, T-Pain has started with, you know, using the auditum. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that? I mean, T Pain can't really sing. I mean, he can't. Yeah, actually, actually, he can sing. He can sing without auto tune. Have you heard his performance on no. NPR Music? No. Yeah, go to NPR Music or go to YouTube, type in T Pain NPR and listen to T Pain without the auto tune and look okay. at the comment section. Because to in my ears and everyone else's ears, he seemed way more better without auto tune. But they promote auto tune. Swift D Pain. I mean, he may not do it as much. I mean, as the auto tune sold. I mean, the auto tune, you know, did what it did. Yeah, because he pushed that thing out, and everybody wanted to be auto tuned. They they can sing and whatnot. I'm like, really, really. So, yeah. but. Yeah, I mean, that's what Drake can do. Okay, uh, now, so, so now that you said Drake, I got to say, because now we passed 2000s, right? So I mentioned like my early 2000s, my early 2000s of artists that I think to me is like the best of the, the 50 years of hip hop. So beyond 2000, because it is 2023, and when did Drake come out? Drake came out in what, 2011, like, 2012? No, he came out a little earlier than that. He came out in like 07, 08 time. Okay, came out in 07, 08. He was below this... for about two or three years. So that's the reason why. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because he was still, you know, of course, we're talking about Degrassi. Degrassi, but yeah, underground. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, okay, so let's take it around that time then. Let's take it around that period then. Then I'm going to have to say Kendrick Lamar for me. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. And where my applause? Where my applause? I'm sorry, where my applause? There we go. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, hands down. Hands yeah. down. Kendrick Lamar, I say, well, you know, Kendrick Lamar, Lupe Fiasco. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been doing ties. I've been doing tie ups. So Lupe okay. Fiasco, Kendrick Lamar, because when Lupe Fiasco came out in 06, I mean, of course, he was rapping way before 2006. But when that food and liquor dropped and when I heard him on Touch the Sky with Kanye, Kanye West, I was like, "Woo! who can flow. Did you yeah, see that like list? Did you see that list? Uh, I don't know who promoted it. That list of uh, the top twenty-five best of all time, and Kanye West was in the top ten. Did you see that? I didn't see that, but everybody got their own list. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. list is different, right? And I did not agree with Kanye being in the top ten of all time. I forgot what list. I cannot remember what who started that list, and a lot of people got mad about Kanye being in the top ten. <laughs> Like not I said, everybody's is, list is different. Nah, not you know, I mean, in some things that Kanye West has done from a music standpoint, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, has never, ever been done by any, any hip hop artist. Right. Has not done, you know. I mean, if he's in somebody's top 10, then if, if he's in somebody's top 10, that means that Kanye has made an impact, a huge impact on that person than 
all the other artists that we, me and you, DJ Roland, we can name should be in top 10 instead of Kanye. Right, exactly. I was like, uh, I mean, as a DJ that played Kanye music and whatnot, I'm not taking his talent away because people keep forgetting that he actually produced a lot of music before he actually had his own solo album and whatnot. You know, I wouldn't say he's in the top 10. I'll say he's in the top 25. He's in the teens and maybe early 20s or something like that. But he's definitely not in the top 10. I'm just sorry. We'll say Kanye, you know, his wordplay is is on point. Yes. His wordplay is on point. Yes. I mean, eh, you know, like I said, everybody's list is different. Yeah, yeah everybody everybody's list is list different. Is different. It is different. It is what it is. Yes. Um, uh, to be continued with this conversation on best artists of all time. Next week, we definitely got to do best groups of all time. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. I know. Just just hold it in your pants. Just hold it in your pants to next week. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, you know, we got the we got the big tribute coming up uh, in the next hour. Uh, tribute to De La Soul. Of course, you mentioned it a few moments ago. Um, Paz. Was he plug one or plug three? One of the plugs. I want to say plug one. Plug two. Plug two. I thought Dave was plug two. Dave is plug two. That's what we're talking about. That's Dave is plug two. And Paz had to be plug one. Yes. Yeah, plug one. Yeah. Paz. Um, and then Maceo plug three. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't want. I yeah. I didn't want to go by the plug thing. I mean that that to me just is too much confusion. That's too much. <laughs> that's that's too much. They were the first hip hop groups that I knew that were doing too much with the names. They they were doing too much with the names. I'm like, no, just keep it simple. Oz, hey. Dave, and Maceo. When you hear the music, you understand why. I, I'm still trying to understand because you know when I got the news about uh, Dave, uh, I learned more about him than when he was alive. I agree. I agree. But when you sure. hear the music and mm-hmm. whatnot, it's what going to be like a learning lesson of what this what he contributed to as part of De La Soul. I got whatnot. you. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I know. it's really different. It really is. Yeah, I know. I'm a simple-minded type of guy, so I yeah. to keep it simple for me because I just want to listen to the music. I want to listen to the music. I want to get... Understand it. And understand yeah. it. <laughs> I know, but understand it. No, I understand it. Just don't treat it like a math class now, because you know I wasn't really all that great in math class. But that's a whole different yeah. conversation. <laughs> um, so of course we all know um, Paz was the only member from De La Soul that performed at this year's Grammys, and then wasn't even that long. Uh, the next thing we knew, Dave, uh, of course, True Gore, the Dove, better known as Dave to many. Others, too many fans and lovers of De La Soul passed away, uh, which was very devastating. I know uh, it was that one night I hit you up and I said, uh, DJ Roll, we got to do something for De La Soul because of this, oh, yeah. this news, which just yeah. was, was so sudden. And that answered my question of why he wasn't there and whatnot. He wasn't well enough. So... Which, by the way, he has had health problems in the past. Right. Yep. Yep. And he spoke publicly about it. Hmm. Yep. But I got to make a correction. I misspoke. I will admit, I misspoke. So remember when we had Riddell Drakeford and Precise come on the morning show? Right. A couple of weeks ago. And we spoke about artists and some groups not getting their flowers because of the whole situation with uh, Nori and Kanye West. Right. Um, they also was actually on an episode of Drink Champs. Hmm. They were. They were. They were on an episode of Drink Champs. Hmm. All three members. I think it didn't get much attention, though. It didn't get much attention as shows like 
the one they did with Kanye West, and the one they did with the game, you know. But it's it's De La Soul, so they ain't push it. That's what it is. They ain't push it out. Yeah, I mean, but nevertheless, they were on the show. They were on the show. Um, I'm I'm satisfied. Maybe not a whole lot, but I I'm satisfied that. Uh, True Gore, the, the dove, Dave, was able to live long enough for him and, and the group to at least get plenty of flowers. You know, I mean, they did a lot for hip hop. They did a lot for hip hop. Um, they even performed during the uh, last celebration. I don't know what you call it, but you know, remember when all the artists came out and they performed for, at that time, President Barack Obama. And this was sort of when President, President Barack Obama was getting ready to transition out of office. And they had this televised event where mm-hmm. artists and groups like De La Soul performed. You wow. remember seeing that? No, I, I don't recall. Because mm-hmm. I know it would have been back in like 2015 or something like that. Yep, this was back in, yeah, 2016. 2016, 2017, somewhere around that, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, they performed for President Barack Obama. Yeah, they lost soul. And good news is that they are now streaming. So you can now get their music on Spotify. You can hear their music on Spotify. Their, their music is now on streaming platforms. You know, we've seen the situation play out uh, between De La Soul trying to get their royalties and, you know, all this other legal stuff with Tommy Boy, their former label. Yeah. Man, but it's just so much history of, of artists trying to get royalties from record labels and stuff like that, man, it's it's a trip because the first person I ever heard that had that issue, the very first person, I'm not saying anyone else before him, but the very first person I recognized that, that he had so much trouble was Prince. He had so much trouble with getting royalties from Warner Brothers. I'll never forget that. <laughs> There's, that's the reason why he had the name Slave tatted on his neck. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that's the music business. Yeah, it is. You know, unfortunately. But at the same time, it gave us De La Soul. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last album together was, of course, The Anonymous Nobody. That was in 2016. Same year as Tribe, same year that Tribe put out their last album with Fife. And and Fife died that year. He was uh when he when they pushed that album out in 2016, Fife died like about a month before the album got pushed out. Because on Saturday Night Live, he's he was scheduled to be there, but he couldn't, so they had to do a tribute of him um, during that live event on Saturday Night Live. I'll never forget but it, that. Didn't Five died in April, though? Because the album, it seemed like the album released in the fall of 2016. Something like that. I know, but, but okay, so I said it backwards. Because when yeah. they performed, when Tribe performed on Saturday Night Live, he died and they had to do a, reach, a, a tribute because he's supposed to come and he was not already not healthy enough, but he was going to make it anyway. But he died like two or three weeks before he's supposed to perform. Hmm. Let me see. Let me fact, fact check this real quick. And Tribe did a great job performing on SNL. Oh, yeah. They did a great job. That was a great tribute to Five Dog. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. And I know exactly where I was 
when and when 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 uh five dog died i know exactly where i was and i was so upset and uh you know how that the old ver uh, old song said uh last night the dj saved my life uh -huh. DJ, dj jc saved my life when he tribute a mix to fife mm. and i was in um uh minneapolis minnesota I'll never forget that. That was, I like, I was working, but I was like, I was listening to him, man. I didn't care who was around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My headphones on, and I was listening to V13 at that time across the country, listening to him. <laughs> man, memory lane. Man, yes. Uh, Five Dog died on March 22nd, 2016. Months later, Tribe Called Quest performed on SNL November 12, 2016. Okay. I knew it was the same year. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't remember the time, but I knew it was the same year. Yep. When was, and when was, the, al when was the album released? Uh, thank you for your service. By the fact that it did too, because all of this happened the same year, 2016. Right. <laughs> uh, we better find that out. Tribe Called Quest, by the way. Uh, and it was not only called Thank You For Your Service, it was also called, hold on. We gotta make sure we fact check everything here on the Beat Break Morning Show. <laughs> uh, the release date was November 11th, 2016. Same month that uh that's, that's the yeah that's, that's the, the SNL yeah we got it from here thank you for your service yeah and I think yeah. I bought that album later later that month or December something like that I know I went to an actual record store and I know where I was when I bought it I said I had to get that CD. Yeah, I said that I didn't like the album at first. I didn't. I wasn't feeling it. Right. Yeah. But I was a yeah. fan, and I and I. And, and, but by being a fan, I'm like, okay, no, it's not like the Midnight Marauders or anything like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I said I'm still gonna support them because <laughs> that's my favorite group. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And the anonymous. Now, I was definitely feeling the anonymous nobody. The anonymous nobody by De La Soul. Same year as Tribe album. Um, but their album was released August 26, 2016. Mm. Yeah. So they were three months apart from each other. Right. That was a great year. That was a great year for both Tribe and De La. Right. Yeah. Great year for hip hop albums. But I, I wonder if now that True Gore, the dove, Dave from De La Soul, now that he is no longer in the spirit with us physically, I wonder if they can still put out a new De La Soul album, which will have to be their last album. Probably so. I wouldn't doubt it. I got to check my sources. I got to call up some people. I got to call up some people and ask them, can we get a final De La Soul album? Can we get a final De La Soul album with some unreleased tracks that we have never heard, that have never seen the light of day with Dave on them? Here's the can thing. We, can, we get, can we get that? I think it can be done uh, with technology. And that's what we mentioned the first part of the show <laughs> about technology. And, um, we're still early part of the year. So I will say either fall or during a winter, which can carry into the new year, that's when the album can drop. That's what I believe. Hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, that is just such a coincidence. So like my dog died in March of 2016, and then months later, November. We got it from here. Thank you for your service. The final Tribe Call Quest album. Yep. 
now we gonna, we've lost Dave from De La Soul in February. Black History Month, man. Yep. 2023. And imagine if they announced that they will put out a new and final De La Soul album the same year. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I'll buy it too. I'll buy it. Yeah. I know exactly where I'm going to buy it at the same spot where I, where I bought the uh, tribe at. I know exactly where to go. And it's not the computer. It's not Amazon. No, it's not Amazon. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know where to go where I get my records from. Shout out to the, shout out to the kind of folks over at DBS Sounds on the South Side. There you go. That's what I was talking about. That's what hey. I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, our um, prayers go out to the family and friends of True Goy, who I did not have the luxury or, or the, the blessing to meet him in person. Like, the, the, that group, I said, I'm going to meet De La Soul one day. I'm going to meet De La Soul one day. I met Common. You know, I, I met uh, Cujo Goody from Goody Mob. I met a lot of great public figures, but I got to meet De La Soul. And I posted on both my Facebook and my Instagram page saying that I did not get a chance to meet this one member. And now he's not physically here for me to meet him, talk to him, you know. Let this be a lesson, people. You got to cherish those moments before they go. Got that right. Take care of yourself. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself physically and mentally. There you go. That's why you got the mental space. Hey, there you go. Wednesday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Yep. Yeah, there you go. All right. So with that being said, we got the caffeine and energy drink mix coming up. Special tribute to De La Soul. DJ Rolone is going to spin some other records in there. He's going to also throw something else in the gumbo there for that one hour. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait for our listeners to hear it. You're going to be shocked, and you, you're going to learn from this mix. You going to learn. Like Harris once said, you must learn. There you go. <laughs> Celebrating 50 years of hip hop continuously on the Beat Break Morning Show throughout the entire year of 2023. And what I'm going to also do, Roland and everyone, is on Facebook at me, Sean Garvey, I'm going to post my interviews with some of the best names in hip hop okay. that have been on the Beat Break Morning Show between now and December of this year. Cool. I'm talking about people from. Chris Kelly of Chris Cross, Eric Sermon, mm -hmm. Sparky D, of course. Right. Uh, who else we had on the morning show? We had so many great hip hop names. Oh, Rizza, Wu Tang. Yeah. I'm going to post yeah. that as well. Their, their new season, I think this is their final season as well. Uh, their new season of Wu Tang, The Saga Continues, is now on Hulu. It's back on Hulu. I think this is their final season, by the way. Yeah, on Hulu. Yep. Yeah. So I got so much to catch up on, so much to watch. Mayor yeah. of Kingstown, shout out to Marcus Brandon for coming on the morning show. Y'all make sure you check his character out as Diedrich on Mayor of Kingstown. And uh, yeah, got some more interviews coming up uh, in the next couple of weeks. But like I said, we're going to work on getting Sparky D on the morning show, back on the morning show, and a special, special celebrity guest. All right, but in the meantime, between time, make sure you download that podcast FM app. Also, big shout outs to our sister station, 101 The Vibe FM in Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Beat Break Morning Show on 87 FM, 101 The Vibe FM. 
Uh, you can also check us out on Roku TV, the Flow Television Network, by the way, on demand, weekdays and weekends. And you know, of course, we always on TuneIn, Reach One Network. We're all over the place. SeanGarveyOnline.com, ReachOneNetwork.tv, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We're all over the place, baby. That's what we do 24-7. At me at Sean Garvey ATL. Uh, at Sean Garvey on Facebook. Make sure you go to sensejustforyou.com and get your order of oil fragrances while supplies last and you can get 20% off of all purchases. Oh, don't forget too, unemployment check. Uh, it is still available on YouTube, by the way. Spotify, the uh, podcast scripted series that I developed. So y'all make sure y'all check it out and support it. We are still working on brand new episodes for this year. We got that on the way. Uh, DJ Roland, before we close out, where can people follow you? How can they get in contact with you? Always, always at follow me at DJ Roland. D-J-R-O-L-L-E-M on Twitter and IG and DJ Roland Townsend on Facebook. Yo, I'm telling you, people keep hitting me up through DM on Facebook for business purposes. They want DJ Rollum at their events. So hit me up. There you go. Hit them up, y'all. Hit them up for your for all things DJs. All right. And uh, we got some more announcements to make. If you need services from us, commercial ads, production, pre and or post, script writing, and more. Make sure you all email me, reach one communications at gmail.com. All right. So, yep, we're here for you. And you continue to be here for us. All right. So, until then, tune in next week. Uh, the Be Great Morning Show, Saturday mornings, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., 87 FM, 101 The Vibe FM, on demand on Spotify. And uh, get ready for this uh, special tribute with De La Soul and some other surprise records. You ready, yeah. DJ Roller? Yes, sir. All right. Stay tuned for the caffeine and energy drink mix by our very own DJ Roller. We're right here on the Beat Break Morning Show after this word from our messages and the station ID. It's the Beat Break Morning Show. Yep. <laughs>